Bile Titans, Bughawks, Launching Nukes, Killer Robots Dropping from the Sky, Dying to Friendly Fire, Losing All Your Rewards Due to Server Connection Issues. Is Helldivers 2 truly the best co-op game of 2024? Well, it could be, if Arrowhead Studios fixes some of the current issues such as the connectivity problem and the lack of content. But the fundamentals are all there, and Helldivers 2 shows its glowing potential. Let me explain that. Don't let the lack of a story mode drive you away. Yes, there isn't a beginning, middle and end to Helldivers 2. There aren't any over-the-top cutscenes with cinematic moments or even memorable characters. There is, however, a general story about why you're doing what you're doing. You're a Helldiver, set on a mission on behalf of the Super Earth to liberate the occupied planets from the factions. Currently, there are only two factions in the game, Terminates and Automatons. Although there isn't any special narrative for each mission, the game utilizes its different features to create a sense of emergent storytelling for players. What this means is that you can create your unique stories in every place. Different loadouts, different squads and different objectives could lead to total chaos. For example, during one of my sessions, we were going to clear a bug list, but suddenly got overwhelmed with a massive hole. Everyone was escaping and I was left behind. I tried my best to regroup with my squad at the extraction point, but during my escape, I saw an army of Terminates marching toward my squad's position. They were being hunted down by a massive group of bugs, and that was one of the scariest moments I have experienced in the game. Although not as scary as the first time I encountered the Bile Titan, I found out that a normal orbital strike is not that effective. Those things are straight out of Nightmare material. So, overall, the lack of a story mode actually comes in handy for this specific game. Since Helldivers 2 is a PvE type of experience, the main goal of the game is to free the occupied planets with the help of other players. Although it is an online game with a massive focus on co-op experience, it is totally possible to play the game solo. But let's be honest, you would be bottlenecking your experience if you don't play the game with others especially since there's a matchmaking system that focuses on helping other players and you can join them on the go to help them with their objectives or even ask for help by dropping SOS signals so that other players may find it and come to your aid. Here's where the main problem stems from. For a game with a heavy focus on co-op, connectivity issues should be minimal. But sadly, Helldivers 2 players, such as myself, had to endure terrible server connection issues during his first week of launch. Being unable to get into the main game, getting disconnected seconds before a match ends, resulting in losing all of our hard works and not being able to join other people easily unless you spam the search button was a bad experience. While there are different mission types to keep you entertained, one smart trick the developers of this game have pulled is the fact that they introduced two dynamic factors for each planet that could turn your whole playthroughs upside down. One is the environmental conditions that could affect the gunplay and combat scenarios and the other is a real game master. Let's talk about the former first. You might visit a snowy planet. Cold weather could affect your rate of fire, or there might be storms that reduce your visibility. I have experienced some of these weather conditions, and let me tell you something, they are a real game changer. I was once caught in a thick mist, and there were tons of bugs attacking me. I couldn't see them properly, therefore I was wasting bullets. Things got crazy once I figured out I didn't kill anything, and I was running low on ammo. And the bad news, I couldn't call any resupply orders because it was under cooldown. On to the Game Master part. A group of developers from Arrowhead actually look over the game and could decide to buff or debuff some of the action that is going on on a mission. This takes dynamic gameplay to another dimension in my opinion. Although, I believe there's always room for more improvements, so I expect Arrowhead to add even more mission types and new factions regularly to the game. Completing missions and different tasks would earn you rewards, which you can then core them to make the core aspect of Helldivers 2 gameplay, or basically its robust combat system, more fun. Bear in mind that while you can buy rewards such as super credits with real money, there are still plenty of them scattered in every mission and it's basically pointless to pay real money for them. What makes the combat system work so well is the perfect gunplay of Helldivers 2, which can be enjoyed in both third person and first person perspective. There are lots of weapons, equipments, cosmetic options and most importantly lots of stratagem variety in the game. These stratagems have the power of turning the tide of war in seconds if used properly. The explosions in Helldivers 2 have the power of deforming the terrain and the destruction of some of the buildings. In one example, I was able to use a stratagem's explosion power to clear a snow way and move easier in the environment, which is a sign that systems in this game are working together. 
although it's worth noting that you have to carefully plan your every encounter in the game. Therefore, don't expect a loadout or strategy that worked in easy difficulty bear the same effect in higher difficulty settings. Speaking of difficulty settings, they are different compared to other games. Instead of simply buffing enemies and debuffing you on higher difficulties, the game throws new enemy types, more challenges and different sets of resources or rewards at you. Things could go from 0 to 100 in seconds once you find out that it's possible for the game to treat you with multiple chargers, stalkers, bug hordes and more enemies all at once. But the real fun is when you're playing with other players. And it doesn't matter whether you are matched with randoms or your friends. The feeling of solving a small puzzle in cooperation with your squadmate, opening the hangar doors with them, giving them supplies or saving them from absolute death is just amazing. There's something about this game that just feels right. Something that makes it pure fun. It could be the sense of cooperation, the breathtaking combat scenarios, or even the not so friendly, friendly fires that have killed me more than the monsters. But that's true, Helldivers 2 is the literal meaning of pure fun. Learning to dive properly to escape enemy attacks at the right time, and not panicking while trying to enter stratagem codes on your controller in the middle of a full-scale war against enemies could prove challenging, but enjoyable at the same time. The game is far from being easy. Don't let the first two difficulty settings fool you. It's hard, even if you're playing with a well-equipped squad of four Helldivers. But it's a fun sort of heart. The difficulty is part of the experience. Just like how dying is part of Soulsborne games experience. Helldivers 2 is one of the best co-op games I have ever experienced. And it also sits as one of the best games of 2024 so far. The game offers tons of fun, can be enjoyed in solo and co-op, has an awesome take on difficulty settings, offers a variety of enemy types and equipment, has an enjoyable chaotic experience for most parts, and is priced at just $40. There's always room for improvement as Arrowhead Studios should resolve the online connectivity issues quickly and add more content to the game in the future. While the game lacks any specific story modes, you won't get to experience fighting breathtaking enemies in the most beautifully visualized world, tons of explosions and destructions, and lots of friendly fires anywhere else. It's the power of emergent storytelling that makes every single moment in this game memorable. Therefore, with everything going on in the game, I believe you shouldn't sleep on Helldivers 2. Besides, if $40 is the price we have to pay to convince PlayStation to bring Bloodborne to PC, then I would gladly do it again. By the way, if you're more into story-driven single-player games, you should check this video of Assassin's Creed Mirage, as I believe it might be a fun experience for you.